The first time this operation was ever done for anybody was in 1943 by Cattell at Leahy Clinic. And for the next 50 years, surgeons who offered this kind of surgery were treated as charlatans and snake oil doctors because they said, people argued there were no scientific data to show any benefit and that we were simply operating on a highly selected group of patients who would do well anyway. We now believe from the data from very large registries such as LiverMet Survey in Europe on which we've now got 11,000 patients on the registry and our own recent publication, British Journal of Surgery, where we looked at 125,000 patients with coital cancer in England between 1998 and 2005 and the 3,500 of those patients who actually underwent a liver resection for stage 4 liver-only metastatic disease. That long-term survival and cure is possible from this operation. No other treatment offers the chance of 10 years survival and the chance of being cured if you reach 10 years out. In our particular population-based study, we demonstrated that for 3,500 patients who underwent liver resection, their five-year survival overall was better than all the patients who presented in stage three at the time of diagnosis. So I think it's beyond any doubt whatsoever that this operation benefits patients with liver-limited or liver-only disease. If I'd been asked that question 10 years ago, the definition of resectability was very straightforward. A standard textbook definition said it was up to three metastases confined to one lobe of the liver, but detected at least a year after successful resection of the primary tumour. And that was a standard textbook definition. And I'm remindful of what Henry Ford once said, that I have no use of textbooks because everything in a textbook is more than four years old and is no use to me. We now know that good long-term results can be achieved in patients in whom we can resect all the diseased liver as long as we can preserve between 25 and 30 percent of disease-free remnant liver with a good vascular inflow blood supply and a good venous drainage. And in that case, we would move from the original definition which restricted re resectability to less than 10 percent of patients with liver-only disease to between 20 and 25 percent of all patients now who have liver limited disease and if we can do that we can achieve good long-term survival and cure. This is totally dependent on multimodal management. The big revolution in the last 10 years is the fact that the clinicians who treat these patients now work together to achieve this end. We, the surgeons, can do a number of things. We can do, for instance, a two-stage hepatectomy, where we will go in and clear out one lobe of the liver and then subsequently come back three or four weeks later when the liver that's been left behind has undergone hypertrophy and grown up and resect the residual disease from that liver. We can improve that by tying off the portal vein to the liver that's going to be re-resected four weeks later and produce, do what we call portal vein embolization and improve the future remnant liver size. On top of that, we can augment that with other techniques such as ablation therapy. Historically, we've used things like alcohol injection, cryotherapy. More recently, we've switched over the last 10 years to radiofrequency ablation, and we've now started using microwave ablation. And we've now demonstrated for the first time ever in the European clock study, that, and this was data presented at ASCO in June of this year, that in a randomized trial, survival can be enhanced by the addition of radiofrequency ablation to chemotherapy over chemotherapy alone and this is now the first proof that ablation enhances survival so we can combine ablation therapy with surgery to get rid of disease from the liver but lastly and perhaps most importantly is using modern chemotherapy and biological therapies to take patients with unresectable liver only disease and treat them and if we can get a response in the liver of up to 70 to 80 percent in terms of response to chemotherapy and biological therapy, we anticipate that maybe 30 to 40 percent more patients with liver-only disease would get such a good response that they could undergo successful liver resection with curative intent. Now, I think with this we have to look at it in two separate ways. We've got to look at it, first of all, in the patient who is upfront resectable, and then we've also got to consider the patient who's borderline resectable. 
In the patient who's upfront receptible, we've certainly demonstrated in the EORTC EPOC study, which we published in The Lancet last year, that combination of chemotherapy, which was neoadjuvant Folfox cytotoxic chemotherapy with adjuvant, gave much better three-year progression-free survival figures over surgery alone in the patients who were resected. There were many criticisms of the study and there are many flaws in the design. I was part of the original uh, writing committee for the trial and one of the authors of the paper and I accept the criticisms, but I do believe that despite these criticisms, the trial did show real benefit in these patients. We are now currently investigating in Europe the addition of biologicals in the UK, we're looking at cetuximab in KRAS wild type patients, and in the rest of continental Europe with the URTC, they're looking at the additions of bevacizumab with cetuximab in these particular patients. The second group, though, are the patients who are borderline resectable or technically unresectable, but where one hopes that a good response to chemotherapy will induce a response that brings them to surgery. And the, the most important data in this group are the German-Austrian study, the CELIM study, using cetuximab, which showed in a phase two study of patients with technically unresectable disease, only 100 patients. But of those 100 patients, over 40 came to liver resection and 33 of those were R0 resections. Now we don't know the long-term survival data yet in that study. That study has now been backed up by other studies with bevacizumab at the moment, which is currently underway here in Europe to see if we can do the same thing with bevacizumab. So these are very exciting times and I do believe that the use of these agents combined with chemotherapy will bring many more borderline or unresectable patients to liver resection with curative intent. I think we've got to look at these patients in three groups. Um, firstly, are the patients who are literally are not fit for a haircut. The patient who's an ASA, American Society of Anesthesiology score, is so poor, that patient's never going to be fit for liver resectional surgery. And in that patient, usually the elderly or usually with significant comorbidities, heart disease, other morbidities, one really wants to improve, concentrate on quality of life and try and prolong life as long as possible. And in those patients, probably the bright policy is an incremental approach, starting with fairly gentle chemotherapy, and if they then progress, increasing, providing the patient tolerates the chemotherapy. The second group are the borderline resectables, where one liver surgeon might say, I can resect that straight away, another one say, I can't resect that. And I think if you took 100 liver surgeons, you get 101 definitions of resectability on those kind of patients. Those kind of patients, I believe, should be given the most aggressive form of chemotherapy up front, and you're going straight in in first line with the best chemotherapy you've got, either powerful doublet therapy or even triplet chemotherapy, with or without a biological, if you believe the biological data, and which biological you, you are most happy with using. The second group of the, sorry, the third group of those patients are the patients who you think up front will never come to resectability, but they're very fit, particularly young patients, and they've got liver-limited disease. And in those patients, again, I would throw the book at them. Go in there, all guns blazing in first line with the most powerful combination of cytotoxic you've got, with a biological of your choice that you prefer, and in those particular patients, then what you want to do is be aggressive for as long as possible because within that group, there will be patients who accidentally become resectable. And those patients, of a small number of whom, will gain benefit long term with survival. The multidisciplinary management of cancer is now a legal requirement in a number of European countries, including the United Kingdom, France, Belgium and Spain. You will not be reimbursed for treating a cancer patient unless you can demonstrate that the patient has been through the tumour board, the multidisciplinary team. Now, in those particular patients, all players are equal. Everybody has a hand in this. We've just looked at a big survey in England at lots of different hospitals and we found wide variation in the use of this historically. We found very wide variation in consideration of liver resection for these patients. 700% difference between the worst performing hospital and the best performing hospital over the last 10 years. And the reason was ignorance. People didn't understand who we wanted to see, who should be seen, and the answer is really it should be everybody with liver limited disease should be seen by a multidisciplinary team that includes a liver surgeon. The liver surgeon has to be in there because only the liver surgeon knows what's resectable and what's not resectable. They need to be specialist GI oncologists in there with the liver surgeon working with them 
interventional radiologists skilled in the various things like radiofrequency ablation, portal vein embolization that are required to bring patients to resectability, and good nurse clinicians in there to manage the patient and their, and their family during what is a very difficult time for the patient and their family. These patients are on a roller coaster. Often they never get off the roller coaster and they need as much support as possible. So it's absolutely essential this management is multidisciplinary.